Senator Di Natale. Uh, Mr uh, Acting Deputy President, uh, I rise today to talk about uh, the Greens' bill on sports betting, which aims to uh, separate gambling from sport. Uh, sport's always been a huge part of the Australian culture. We're a sporting country. We love to play sport. We watch it. Um, it's a big part of the lives of many Australians. But over recent years, we've seen a gradual creep of gambling into most of uh, our major sporting codes. Um, it's resulted in uh, a, an issue where um, we are seeing a quadrupling in the number of betting advertisements uh, over the last two years. It's an issue where it's very hard to watch a major sporting broadcast without being bombarded by uh, an absolute barrage of betting advertisements and, until recently, the promotion of live odds through those broadcasts. But um, there's been some movement on this issue since I last rose to speak about it, and we've now seen an announcement from the government uh, for the first time indicating that it's prepared to put uh, the brakes on gambling in sport. And I want to talk about that in a moment. But Firstly, I want to talk about how we got to this point and how we got to uh, a point where we're finally seeing some action in this area. And it really does highlight just how critical it is to have uh, an alternative voice, another voice in the Senate um, with the Greens. Uh, at the start of this year, uh, I was sufficiently concerned about the issue and the um, gradual uh, increase and over uh, recent years, not so gradual increase, uh, uh, of the influence of gambling in sport. And I referred it to the Joint Select Committee on Gambling. Um, through that committee, we heard evidence from the major broadcasters, from the sporting codes themselves, and of course from a range of stakeholders, uh, including people uh, who were like me extremely concerned about the rise of uh, sports betting promotion and advertising in our major sporting codes. Um, uh, through that inquiry process, it became absolutely clear that we needed legislation in this area. Uh, I drafted a bill, a bill that was reasonably straightforward. It focused on three key areas. Uh, the first area was the area around um, ensuring that uh, we no longer saw the promotion of betting odds through our sporting broadcasts. Uh, the second area was the issue of advertising through discrete commercial breaks that was occurring during children's viewing times. We have a situation where we're not allowed to advertise gambling products during uh, G-rated programming. And yet we have this enormous, this gaping loophole that says if it's, a, if it's a sports broadcast, no matter what time of day it is, we're going to continue to allow the advertisement of betting products. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a loophole that we decided needed to be fixed, and we drafted legislation that would effectively prohibit gambling advertising before 9 pm. Uh, the third component of the bill was essentially around the issue of gambling promotion becoming embedded not just in sports broadcasts but in sports related programs, programs like the footy show and now the uh, myriad of um, sports related programming that we see around our major sporting codes, where during the program itself we're seeing a whole lot of uh, cross promotion around uh, betting products with the name of betting uh, companies being named regularly through the uh, sports-related show. Uh, we decided that uh, we, if we're going to stop the promotion of betting advertising, then that needs to include uh, advertising throughout the broadcast itself. And so that was the third major component uh, of that bill. Um, that bill uh, uh, was supported by the community. A po uh, several polls demonstrated that the notion of reducing uh, betting advertising uh, through children's viewing times needed to stop. Widespread public support around that. 
Uh, we then took the issue to the parliament. We uh, put forward a motion uh, around essentially those components of the bill in an attempt to get support for it. And what we saw was, in fact, some movement from uh, some uh, backbenchers uh, within the Labor Party, who essentially took up the major elements of our bill uh, and threatened to uh, put that bill to caucus in an attempt to get it up as a private member's bill. Uh, in response to all of that action, action that was initiated by the Greens originally through the referral to the Joint Select Committee on Gambling and later through our uh, private senator's bill, we saw huge community response. Uh, the community uh, responded very clearly, very loudly, and said they wanted to see it stop. And in fact, in response to that, what we saw was some action from the government. And we're very pleased that the government did respond, uh, or at least acknowledge uh, the issue, uh, not as pleased with the breadth of their response. So the government response was to effectively prohibit the promotion of betting odds through sports uh, broadcasts. That's a good thing and we absolutely support it. However, the uh, proliferation of gambling advertising will continue and gambling advertising during children's viewing hours will continue under the government's uh, proposal. Furthermore, it does nothing to address the issue of gambling sponsorship uh, of sports-related programs, so we'll continue to see shows like The Footy Show continue to spruik um, uh, betting products. Uh, finally, it was a proposal that would not be legislated but would continue to remain um, the responsibility of industry. And our concern, of course, is that uh, with the change in government we may in fact see industry backslide on that proposal. We're very, very concerned about that, which is why we want to see these changes legislated. But the point remains we would not have seen any action had it not been for the continued advocacy of the Greens and, in fact, some of my fellow crossbenchers uh, who uh, have also done a lot of work in this area and, indeed, um, the work of some of those government backbenchers who took up the Greens' proposals and put those to their caucus. Um, it's a very powerful reason for why the Australian community continue to vote uh, for the Greens uh, in the numbers that they do, because they do know that we need an alternative voice, another voice in this place, to put these issues on the agenda, issues that would not be there without advocates uh, like us. Of course, the concern I have is that up until this point, and including the response from government, what we're seeing is a response that essentially leaves the responsibility for action with the government. And of course, I, I, I might be missing something. I'm new to this place, but this idea of self-regulation for me has always been one that I find, I find most intriguing. Um, it's the responsibility of uh, betting companies to increase their uh, market share. It's the responsibility of betting, products, of betting companies to increase the number of customers that they attract. It, that's what they do. They're a company that exists to make a profit. I don't blame them for doing that. I find it remarkable that we would entrust uh, a company whose primary motivation will be to increase the number of customers using their product with the responsibility of actually putting limits around the promotion of their product. Uh, it's no wonder that we've seen no action to date. And this isn't simply an issue that relates to uh, gambling products. It applies to uh, other adult products like alcohol, where we, again, have entrusted the industry to, uh, uh, to, to um, control advertising and to monitor advertising to see whether that's appropriate. We're entrusting them at the moment with the development of labels, of, um, of um, warning labels on alcoholic beverages. And it's no wonder that what we're seeing as a result of that process is action that is almost uh, meaningless. But um, uh, 
the reason we, we, we think this action is necessary is because um, gambling is not a harmless product. Uh, it is fun for some. Uh, there are people in the community who enjoy the odd punt, but there are others where problem gambling destroys their life. It means that kids sometimes don't get fed at night. It means that uh, families break up. It means that some people end up losing their homes. And when there is a product with that potential for harm, there is a very clear role for government to step in and to legislate. Now, I'm not proposing a ban on the activity itself, and it's really important we make this distinction. There is the product, um, and there are obviously very clear controls around the way the product needs to be sold, and we support those. But separate to that is the issue of the promotion and marketing of that product. Uh, so uh, we're not advocating for a ban on gambling. In fact, we know in the sports betting arena that a ban on gambling could lead us down a particularly dangerous road. We know that there is the potential for a corruption in sport. We've seen that internationally, and that's why we do acknowledge that there is a role for a regulated betting market here in this country. But the question is, what sort of limits are we prepared to put around the advertising and promotion of that product in an effort to protect, firstly, young children who are exposed to the advertising of an adult product, and secondly, those people, those adults, who will get into serious trouble as a result of an addiction uh, to, the cell, uh, to, to that product. So what we've got is a, a situation at the moment where uh, both the codes and the gambling industry uh, continue to go down a, an approach where uh, what we're going to see is uh, continued uh, advertising and marketing and as little change as possible. And to the Greens, that's simply not acceptable. Um, the issue of, um, I suppose, that generated the most outrage with, with the sporting community has been the inclusion of bookmakers like Tom Waterhouse as part of the editorial team. And um, it, I think it's fair to say that uh, the uh, sporting codes lost a tre tremendous amount of goodwill uh, as a result of that uh, relationship and that, in fact, uh, what we saw was a huge response from the community, particularly uh, through social media. The response of industry, of course, was, sim was just to change the logo on uh, Mr Waterhouse's microphone and to um, effectively uh, take him out of the commentary box but put him on the uh, sporting ground where he would become effectively a commentator uh, from the sidelines. Now, there is simply no way for a young person who is watching a game of rugby, a game of footy, to uh, make the distinction between Tom Waterhouse, the commentator, and Tom Waterhouse, the bookmaker. And that's why um, it's important that we step in and legislate in this area. I genuinely believe that uh, we are at a crossroads when it comes to sport in this country. Uh, we heard through the uh, evidence uh, tendered to the Joint Select Committee that young kids now can recall uh, a number of the major sporting companies, um, uh, the names of those sporting companies, uh, some of the uh, names of uh, athletes and other celebrities associated with those sporting companies. And in fact, we're seeing uh, young adults now uh, integrating their enjoyment of uh, a game of football uh, with gambling. Uh, we're seeing a situation where going to a game of football has become almost like going to the racetrack. And that's not a future that most, of, most Australians want for their major sporting codes. Uh, they don't want um, 
watching a game of football to become like an interactive gambling experience. They don't want going to a game of football to become like going to a small casino. They want to enjoy sport for the sake of enjoying sport. And we've got to remember that there are many, many good things that sport uh, does bring us. Um, as a young person growing up and playing sport, uh, it was an opportunity uh, to become a part of my local community. Uh, it's an opportunity to keep fit and healthy. Uh, it's an opportunity, particularly for regional areas where I now live, um, to uh, demonstrate and bring together people from all walks of life, um, all together in the shared pursuit of doing something that's both healthy and enjoyable. And the growing entanglement of gambling and sport uh, cuts right against some of those uh, terrific objectives. A sport is big business, of course it is. Um, our major sporting codes have got huge billion dollar television deals. Uh, there are huge profits, uh, more professionalism associated with most of our major sporting codes. Um, but in the end, um, the most corrosive, the most insidious change to our major sporting codes isn't the increasing professionalism associated with those sports. I, I personally am not a big fan of the, um, the music that comes after every goal and the, um, uh, the, the, the marketing paraphernalia, the new jumpers that come up each year, and I know people, uh, other people feel the same way, but that's, not, that's a minor annoyance um, to some of us. Um, what really I think most Australians object to is that until recently, gambling was over here and sport was over there. If you wanted to have a punt, you go down to the racetrack. Uh, if you wanted to have a punt, you could go down uh, to the casino. And if you wanted to play sport or watch sport, you'd go to your local sporting oval. Uh, but now, uh, for the first time, those two things uh, are now entwined. And what we're seeing is uh, a huge increase in the number of advertisements, in the sponsorship that occurs in all of our major sporting codes, and a real blurring of the line between commentary and advertising. And so the time has come to change it. As I said when I started, um, when we began this campaign um, only uh, earlier this year. It was clear that there was huge community concern. Uh, we took that on through our referral to the Joint Select Committee on Gambling, through the development of this bill, which we still will continue to work on to get passed. We are pleased that there has been some response from government, but there is much, much more to do. And so during this election campaign, we will continue to ensure that the issue of sports betting, that the entanglement uh, of gambling and sport remains on the agenda, and that what we get is a firm commitment from whoever forms government to legislate and take decisive action.